Hands up if you've got a random assortment of things cluttering up your wardrobe that are not just clothes. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about 10 things that you need to declutter from your wardrobe today because they just shouldn't be there. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organizing your home. Now, here are your hosts, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you're a brand new listener, thank you so much for being here and for testing us out. But if you've been here for a while, that is absolutely amazing. This is podcast 180, (laughs) Leslie, 180 and counting. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I don't even know what to say. Yes, leave us a review. If you you love our podcast, leave us a review because we love those reviews, don't we, Ingrid? Absolutely. And you know what, Leslie? It's a 10 Things podcast. We love a 10 Things podcast. And it's all about wardrobes today, isn't it? Yes, it is. And this might be a little bit different to what you're expecting, because I think you might think, yeah, I know the kinds of things that I need to take out from my wardrobe. But we're going to talk about a random assortment of things that find their way into wardrobes. And they're on, we are on the warpath to get them out of those wardrobes. So your wardrobes only have clothes in them. So let's kick it off, Ingrid, with number one. Yeah. And can I just say, we, this list is from our own experience, isn't it? I mean, this is not, we've not made these things up. We have actually found all of these things that are coming in this 10 Things podcast in wardrobe. So, yes, I can't wait. Number one. Oh my gosh, Leslie, it is such a bugbear of mine. Plastic from dry cleaning that's either still over close or there's an empty hanger with the plastic still over it or it is already crumpled up somewhere pushed away in the back of the wardrobe or in the bottom of the world oh my gosh it's the it just drives me nutty (laughs) it does drive you nutty and so it's a kind of it's an unfinished thing, isn't it? So people leave them in there because they take the item out. You get it dry cleaned, you hang it in your wardrobe. There's something quite nice, I think, isn't there? People quite like the feeling of plastic over dry cleaning because it makes things feel clean. So it's all about psychology that sits in there. But then we take the item off and we leave the plastic in, don't we? So the, th- the reason why we don't like that is because, A, it absolutely serves no purpose whatsoever if it's empty. And... The secondly, if your item is covered in a dry cleaning plastic wrapper, is that what they're called, wrappers? Mm -hmm. Then that creates actually a barrier. And so you don't see that as readily as you would see other other items in your wardrobe. So what that means is you don't necessarily choose it. So sometimes people like to keep that plastic wrap on if it's something that's used very, very occasionally. So if you really want to keep the plastic wrap on, that's a good thing. But if it's something that you're using all the time, get the plastic wrap off and get it it seen in your wardrobe so then you will start to wear it yes and not only that it makes a wardrobe feel so messy when you kind of open the doors and you see all this plastic and it's like what is all this stuff and and the first thing i do is just kind of okay you should see me on youtube now trying to show leslie how i kind of pull things out of a wardrobe so if you're watching this on youtube Thank you so much for being here. If you're like, oh, what? Yes, our podcasts are now on YouTube because we know besides listening, you also love watching our podcast. So there's me trying to show Leslie how to grab empty dry cleaning wrappers out of a cupboard. It's the first thing I do. First thing. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's the most useful thing that you've ever demonstrated. I'm not going to lie. You know, like Ingrid's arms are just floundering around, really. I don't think there's any sense in that but thank you for sharing that with us <laughs> amazing yes you're right Ingrid so many people are now listening to us and watching us on YouTube which is quite cool actually because it's something that we only kind of introduced didn't we in episode 150 so we've only been doing this 30 episodes but people are liking what they see for some reason but anyway <laughs> <laughs> anyway without further ado yep. let us go on to number two that rhymes I love a rhyme yes yes so number two is important documents 
How often do we find passports, driving license, birth certificates, wills, wedding certificates? I mean, that kind of thing in a wardrobe. Know, very odd. <laughs> it is very odd. It is very odd. We understand how these things happen. Now, we could go on about this for 17 hours of a paperwork course, but we won't do that. Just to su suffice to say that we believe... Those kind of important documents, the ones that Ingrid has mentioned, should be summed there with the rest of your paperwork or alternatively, they could be in a safe, but a wardrobe is not really going to cut it in the same way that a safe would, is it, Ingrid? No. <laughs> if now, you've got a safe in your wardrobe, which a lot of people do, then that's a different matter entirely. But if you just randomly put it there as if you're kind of imagining that there's a safe there and it's just a shelf <laughs> with a pair of knickers on it, then that's not gonna, really going to work. Take those important documents out and put them somewhere where they, where they belong. I know. I, I I was just kind of going to say yes, unless you actually have a safe that's in your wardrobe, because it's kind of a place that makes sense to have a safe. Maybe because people think that in the night, you know, I don't want to have stuff downstairs, and when I want to have it in a room where I'm sleeping, I don't know if that really helps. But I think probably people who burgle houses know that we hide stuff in our wardrobes, don't we? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So they might be looking for a safe and then they don't find a safe, but they do find your passport and your house deeds. And so that's not useful. <laughs> I wonder whether the whole safe thing in wardrobes, Ingrid, comes from, because they're always in a wardrobe in a hotel, aren't they? Yeah. So do you think it's something to do with that? And we're like, oh yeah, well, a safe belongs in a wardrobe. Do you think it's that? Huh, I... I that, I have never won. I mean, you know that I've worked in hotels for many, many years. So I've I've seen lots of different hotels and I've seen, indeed, you're right, that safe is always in the cupboard because you just don't want to leave it out. So it makes sense. But maybe that's why people put them in their own house, in their, cup, in their wardrobes as well. Mm. I know. I, one of those things, if that. anybody works for a safe, safe company or a security <laughs> company, do let us know the rationale as to where a safe should be. Anyway, yeah. number two, those documents don't need to be in with your t-shirts. They need to be somewhere completely different. So if you've got those kind of documents in your wardrobe, have a think about whether that's a sensible thing to do. Yeah. And so now we will go on to number three. Yes, and this is a very bulky item normally, Leslie. And it's a wedding dress. We very, very regularly find a wedding dress in people's wardrobes. So in the stuff they see daily, the wedding dress is there, the wedding was, 22 years ago or 12 years ago but the wedding dress is still sometimes in a cover sometimes not in kind of your main wardrobe space taking up lots and lots of space and that's the problem so it could be a another very bulky item wedding dresses bridesmaids dresses Holy communion dresses, all those kind of bulky things. They're the kind of thing that takes up loads of space. And so what we're saying is your wardrobe needs to be things that you're going to wear on a regular basis. And your wedding dress is a sentimental item. Now, if you've got overflow wardrobes in other rooms of your homes, perhaps that is the place for your wedding dress, but not in your main wardrobe that's not where it belongs because it's going to take up loads of space and it's going to take away from the things that you're wearing every day so if you've got something like that think about trying to send it somewhere else in your home if that's possible or i mean leslie i mean we know that some people are lucky enough to have a gigantic walk-in wardrobe then it probably makes sense to have it there but i mean like me i got a three-door wardrobe i can't stick my wedding dress in there because that's where my kind of current wardrobe needs to be so the wedding dress is somewhere else in my house so but we see it all the time taking I up do. lots and lots yeah, of space it's valuable space i don't know what i think if i saw my wa my wedding dress in my wardrobe every day when i opened it i don't know whether that would be depressing you know like <laughs> the size of it compared to the size of me <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> it can be a bit like all right, that was me one day when I was at the height of my life, looking beautiful for one day only. <laughs> I don't know about that. Mine's kind of, yeah, mine's, I still have it. We've talked about it in our wedding dress podcast that we did. We did a whole podcast on wedding dresses, didn't we? Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know what I'd feel about it. But ultimately, if you've not got loads of space and it's in your main wardrobe, your wedding dress does not deserve its space there. It needs to be elsewhere. On a, on a nice little side, Leslie, my mum downsized last year, so the wedding dress used to be in like a spare wardrobe in my mum's house, but she downsized, so it had to. So it's now here in my house. So I showed my children, and Anne was like, "Oh, I love your wedding dress. I want to wear that one day when I get married." And I'm like, "That's a very nice thought, Anne, 
but I'm not forcing you to do this. Just to be clear, if at that time, and even if you say to me now, you change your mind, that's fine too, because I just don't want her to feel the pressure. Like I once said to my mom that I want to wear a wedding dress and now it's my day and I actually want to buy something new. So I went, love your thought. It will be <laughs> here. But if you change your mind, that's really, really fine with me as well. So yeah, no one want to put that pressure on my kids. I mean, I didn't even know if she's going to get married or not. And it's not, you know, it's it's so long down the line. She's like 13, but I think she just was like, <laughs> no, it's it a nice is romantic thought, isn't yeah. it? We like yeah. the thought. But a lot of people do use elements of wedding dresses in their design and stuff yeah. like that. So there's lots of things. But that's all in the that's all in the wedding dress podcast. Yeah. So let's not get bogged down at number three. Yeah. On wedding dresses. Let's go on to number four. Yes. And I kind of suddenly when we we're making this list, it suddenly just came into my head going, change, small change. Like money, I mean, every wardrobe, there's a pot, a jar, a bag, you know, those little tiny money bags, a plastic bag with money bags in there, or handbags with lots of small chains in the bottom of them. And it's like, why is this bag so heavy? And there's like this 201p pa- uh, coins that come from this bag. Small change. I'm just trying to think, you know, Ingrid, whether... You know, because we, we both lived in America, it's changed the term used in, well, probably North America. Oh. I'm not sure that it is. I feel like there's another name for it. Yeah. I don't know. Do you? Can you think? I'm like, mm, I just feel it. I just, when you were saying it, I'm like, oh. But anyway, we mean coins. So we yeah. mean coins. Yeah. And so that's what we're talking about. So you're right. And the reason why it's in there quite often is because... And this happens less and less now because we don't really use as much money as we used to. And we definitely don't use coins. I mean, what can you get with coins these days? Like not a chance, but you do get (laughs) coins back, don't you? Most people are paying contactless now. and so There's much less change around. I mean, I, you know, whenever, whenever I've found a pound for the parking, I'm like struggling because all I've got is my phone. And I'm like, I haven't got a pound. (laughs) That's what I mean. But anyway. And so the reason why it's in there is because people take coins out of their pockets. Uh, men quite often do it a lot more than women then perhaps. And then they kind of gather it together. They take it out of their thing and they put it somewhere in the room, in the wardrobe. And then it always seems like a really good idea to gather it together. So quite often, you know how people save like pound coins and stuff, like, and then they have hundreds of pounds that they can use. Quite often those are in wardrobes as well, aren't they? Those kind of pound coin storage kind of things for a rainy day. And so in Ingrid and I's opinion, is that the word? Is that the way? Ingrid and I's opinion? Ingrid and my opinion? How do you <laughs> yeah. say that? Ingrid and my, in our opinion, that's easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I never know how to say that. We don't believe that any kind of change or coins should be in a wardrobe. A wardrobe is for clothes and shoes. Yes. Let's draw that line in the sand, Leslie. <laughs> but I mean, it's in, I mean, we see it everywhere. Random little pots, little trays, also in a home office to make a little sidestep. I mean, we see them everywhere in the kitchen, where in, in the hallway where people come in with their stuff. And it's like, just gather it together and actually put, there's coin machines in the supermarket where you can put it in and then it also automatically runs through it and you then they tell you how much it was. Don't let it sit in your wardrobe gathering dust because there's absolutely no point to it. Talking about dust, that is number five on our list, Leslie. (laughs) We find lots and lots of dust in wardrobes and definitely it should be decluttered. I feel like, you know, I mean, we put it in there and it's quite random, but we just wanted to highlight the fact that it's time to look at the dust in your wardrobe. We know you can't really do the standard stuff with decluttering and take it and put it in a bin bag and donate it to the charity shop. That really wouldn't work, would it, with dust? But I suppose what we're trying to highlight is look after your wardrobe's clothes. I've got, it's got it sounds quite grim, doesn't it? There's loads of sort of skin particles go on it and that dust drops. It drops onto whatever's at the bottom of a wardrobe. Wardrobes are super, super dusty. So every now and again, Wipe the rail over, get the hoover out and and do the shelves. You know, wipe over the shoes or whatever it is that's at the bottom of your wardrobe. Declutter those layers of dust. Yes, and you know I love a bit of cleaning. So get your hoover out, get your microfiber cloth out and give it a little wipe. It's, It's a bit like spring cleaning. And also don't forget to open a window when you're doing this, especially if your wardrobe's been neglected for a while. 
it is gonna be far more dusty than you might think. So do open a wardrobe if you're kinda, of, oh sorry, do open a window if you think I'm gonna tackle this wardrobe and get some fresh air in. I am loving this 10 Things podcast. It's quite random, isn't it? Yeah. But for now, let's go to a little break. Because Hi, just a little break from this podcast episode to ask you a favor. If you love tuning in every week to listen to us talk all things clutter, then we would appreciate it so much if you could take five minutes out of your day to leave us a review. You can do it in your podcast player or on our website. It helps spread the word so that other people can kickstart their decluttering journey too. So welcome back. And we are here with number six. And honestly, this is one that Ingrid and I get very, very passionate about, isn't it, Ingrid? We we don't like the word hate because that's a little bit too strong, but we really are verging on hatred of these things, aren't we? <laughs> Let's call it loathing, shall we? Yeah. What am I talking about, Ingrid? Multi-tier hangers. That, just, is that all you've got? That's all you've got to say about it? You're honestly. So you can't even... You can't uh, even <laughs> I think I'm having red marks in my neck now. <laughs> they sound like an amazing idea, but trust us, after years of working in thousands of homes, multi tier hangers are not your friend, should have never been invented, and should not be bought by people. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And I still see loads of adverts popping up on feet all of the time for all these like multi-tier hangers. Like, no, enough with the multi-tier hangers. So what do we mean by a multi-tier hanger? So it's kind of a standard coat hanger, but it has several kind of rungs. Is that the word? Rungs? Rings? Rungs? Bars? Rods, bars? bars? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Bars. So the idea would be then perhaps that you would then hang six sets of trousers pairs of trousers over these multi-tiers and that's going to save you tons and tons of space no it's not going to save you any space because the space is taken up by the six pairs of trousers and all it's going to do is make trouser number two three four five and six really hard to get to very invisible because they're covered by the other things and it's just a complete mess isn't it I'm, I'm nodding my head. Our listeners can't see this, but I'm like, I'm nodding my head exactly as you're speaking. Yes, all of the reasons above, Leslie. Yes, and also, of course, a lot of our wardrobes, if we've designed it in a certain way, are like half, what we would call half hanging, yeah? And so if you then put six pairs of trousers all underneath each other, they're going to trail on the bottom. So there is no good reason at all for multi-tier hangers to be in existence. I feel we need to stop because there's going to be loads of people going, but I like my multi-tier hangers. And they're going to be like, I'm, I don't agree with them. I feel like we might, you know, some people might disagree with us. What do you think? It, it, it is very possible this is a very Marmite type situation. You either love multi-tier hangers or you loathe them. And I think we're, it's very clear that we're both in the loathe uh, <laughs> segment of the multi-tier hanger. But up till now, and like I said, 12 years, each of us working in, in, in hundreds or thousands of houses, we've never once found it that we thought, we need a multi-tier hanger for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just don't work. They cause more problems than they solve is the bottom line. Yeah. And so, and I think if you're tight on space or if you've got too many clothes and you're like, I need a solution to this. The solution is that you need less clothes and you need to only have the clothes that you love. But what we do, of course, is we need to, we try and find storage solutions to fix the problem rather than tackle the problem at source, which is the, the fact that you've got too many things. So multi-tier hangers are, are always on our list of they're really high like they're in my like top three of loathed items yeah generally yeah. in life i think mm. that's bad isn't it why have we got it in for the multi-tier hangers <laughs> like, yeah i know some like multi-tier hangers gonna go well thanks very much now leslie and ingrid <laughs> yeah. my sales are gonna drop dramatically because you don't like them <laughs> No one who, who owns a multi-tier hanger company is ever going to sponsor our podcast, are they? <laughs> anyway, we have another hanger situation going on, and that is number seven of our list of 10 things. And that is what we see is when there are kids size hangers in adult wardrobes. So the adult is a size, whatever, 12, 14, 16, whatever they are. But suddenly you're like, 
that is a really small hanger <laughs> and it's like for an age five to six and then you see this <laughs> this this size 16 top or on, on an age six hanger it's like there's something really wrong here <laughs> Yeah, and it comes about because maybe we're doing the ironing and we haven't kind of taken all the, the existing hangers out of our wardrobes. Things have gone into the wrong places. So it's not the end of the world. It's not We've not got a multi-tier hanger situation. They're just in the wrong place. And so it's really important that you have the right size hanger for your clothes because that way the, your clothes look best. You're going to look at them. They sit nicely in your wardrobe. So if you have this situation where you've got kids hangers in your wardrobe, or the alternative is that there are adult hangers in your children's wardrobes, then try and do a swap over when you've got five minutes. Yeah, it doesn't take that long, does it? And I think it's really something that's really worthwhile because the clothes will slip off the hangers. And that is, I think, something that people don't realize. They're going to always quickly get a hanger. But if the clothes are a, norm, a larger normal adult size and you, they're on tiny hangers they slip off they then fall in the bottom of the wardrobe they get dusty they get crumpled you don't see it so you're not gonna wear it and suddenly it's like i thought i had a top this size this 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 color or this fabric where has it gone and then it's from at some point when you're gonna tackle that dust you're gonna go well the mystery has been solved it's been lurking in the bottom completely invisible by plastic uh, um covers from dry cleaning <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly yeah but underneath the dust so the dry cleaning things first and then the dust and then the yeah and then the clothes that you want to yeah. wear exactly yeah. exactly it's a big problem we had a big problem these wardrobes and we're here on a mission to get these wardrobes sorted aren't we yeah and so the next thing on our hit list and it is definitely a hit list isn't it this yeah is it's sounding a bit like a hit list now <laughs> leslie it's like sounds like we're way too passionate about this what what these things that should not be in a wardrobe but anyway we need to get a bit of a life but anyway number eight is kind of along the same line as the dry cleaning plastic isn't it but what is it ingrid number eight yes number eight is suit carriers you buy a suit in a store it happens, I think, a little bit more with uh, men buying suits, like a trouser and a jacket in a store. Or but a dress, or a dress, like or, women buy oh, dresses yeah. in suit carriers as well. Yeah, and you get a suit carrier when you buy the item to carry it home, because maybe it is really nice brand or whatever, whatever. And then the suit carriers find their way into the wardrobe. The dress or the suit is out of it, but the suit carrier stays there on a hanger in your wardrobe, taking up lots and lots of space. And there's never one. There's never, there's never just one. There's like eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, there are people, of course, who do use suit carriers regularly. So people who travel for work do use suit carriers. But in general, if people are traveling that they need to keep suits really nice or multiple suits, they have a more substantial suit carrier that almost looks a little bit like a suitcase kind of thing it kind of zips over and it's a kind of more of a rigid one and so the ones that we're talking about are the ones that you get in shops now it's really hard as well because Ingrid said a lot of the things that we get these things in typically are more expensive so we might get something with a nice kind of brand on it you know you might have like a I'm trying to think of a nice brand I haven't got one Ingrid can you think of a nice brand <laughs> like, yeah, like um like a Dior, like like as if I would ever have a Dior suit hanger. But anyway, um, be nice if we did. But that's the kind of thing that we tell, oh, well, that's a Dior suit hanger. So then why would I then get rid of it? So the higher the brands, the harder it is to get rid of the item because we feel that it comes along with that aspirational territory. But ultimately, really think about whether you need a suit carrier, whether you're ever going to reuse it again, whether you're going to put that item back in the suit carrier. Again, if it's something that you're using very, very infrequently, you may feel that you want to cover it. If your wardrobe is exposed to the light, for example, you might want to cover it up. But invariably, if you're just a standard wardrobe with a sta you know, standard wardrobe with standard stuff that you're wearing and there's nothing too crazy in there cost-wise, then suit carriers are not generally that helpful. Yeah, I think especially because of visibility, um, Leslie. I mean, if you've got the one nice dress in the one suit carrier, you know it's the one nice dress. I think the problem is if there's lots of suit carriers, all kind of some with suits, some without suits, some other random stuff that is not a suit has ended up in there. And you completely lose track of what you have because they're normally darker colors. So you have to open the zip to have a look what's in it. So it gets rid of them, the visibility, and people lose track of what they have and then don't wear it. 
Exactly. You are so right. So suit carriers are on our hit list. Not that yes. high, not that high, but they are definitely on the hit list for some people. Now, these are definitely on my hit list. Another one, not quite as passionate as the uh, multi-tier hangers, but these definitely do my head in. Okay, well, tell us, Lizzie, what's number nine then? We don't even know what they're called. <laughs> we, we should maybe have Googled it, but what they are is like these plastic things that you put in your wardrobe and they're kind of half a cent, half a moths. Mothball thingies. Mothball thingies, exactly, <laughs> mothball thingies. They're like little plastic things. So there's, they come in lots of different, they, so there's nice ones that are like little lavender bags. You might have wooden ball type things that you put in there as well that sometimes come on a little hanger. But more often than not, we get these kind of plastic, they almost look like little hangers with like, yeah. I don't know, like filters in them or something. I don't, or, or maybe they're like sticky things for the moths to go into. Yeah. But what we do is we put them in there when we have a moth problem and we never end up taking them out. Yeah. Am I right, Ingrid? How many of these have we seen? Yes, many. And the thing is, what I find very funny, in, uh, that it always gives me kind of an internal giggle. And of course, I'm not going to laugh at the client, obviously, but it gives me a giggle because the, pl <laughs> the sticky plastic in there is full of moths, but it expired like a year ago. So I'm like, how's your moth problem going? Oh, no, they're long gone. I'm like, well, there's a moth thing in here, but it's expired. So even if you would still have it, you would know because it would, you know, then we need to, if you have a moth problem, we need to replace the plastic thing in there or go for a cedar block or a lavender bag or something else. But the problem is there's normally multiple of these and they completely block up the flow of being able to move your hangers back and forth. And they kind of get stuck and in the way and then they fall in the bottom of the wardrobes or they're just n not used anymore. <laughs> I can't I can't really get past thinking about you having an internal giggle. I know, but <laughs> it makes me it makes me giggle. I'm like, let's see. Oh, this is <laughs> like a year ago. <laughs> You're easily pleased, aren't you? I know, I am. <laughs> I just I just love, you know, I love I love making the transformation. It makes me incredibly happy. It's I so know. nice. Uh, here's the thing. It makes me happy as well, Ingrid. I just don't uh, Honestly, it's like it's only Ingrid that loves this transformation, that I never like these transformations at all. That's no, but awful. it has to do with cleaning. You know me. I just... I know. It makes me I happy. Know. Let's not get started on that. So that was number nine, Ingrid. And now we are on to number ten. Yes, number ten indeed, Leslie, is things that don't belong in your wardrobe like presents. We see a lot of presents being hidden in wardrobes, kind of at the back, of, in the back corner, behind the boots, behind the coat, behind the trousers. There's suddenly a present for somebody. And people yeah, and forget. A, yeah, and there's a reason why presents end up there for obvious reasons. Yeah, because sometimes we do have to hide things, but it shouldn't be a permanent resting place for presents and gifts should it it should be something that's kind of transient that just happens and what happens is we put them in there we hide them we forget we've hidden them and then we find them like a year later don't we and then they're just like useless yeah and so really keep keep on top of that kind of thing if you want to keep outgoing presents in your wardrobe it should only be there for a short amount of time and not permanently yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's worth digging through, kind of pulling your clothes to the side a little bit and go, what's lurking in here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that was quite a good little list, I think. I, 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 I think probably when we finish this podcast, we're going to think of five other things, Leslie, that, that could have been in wardrobes that shouldn't really be there. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed I it. I enjoyed it. So that is the 10 things podcast for this week. Next week, we are talking about sentimental jewelry. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks so much for listening and see you next time. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week. Thank you.